Perfect. I was and still am devastated. It was a humid evening in May. I had just finished a long day of running small errands and arranging my collection of assorted flavors of candy based on how crinkly a sound the wrapping paper made. I laid back in my chair and realized I've been narrating every single moment of my life for the past three days. I was in the mood for a detective drama. A good mystery. So I turned on my old rig, logged into Steam, and what I found changed my life forever. It's not every day that a piece of entertainment so terrible, so without merit, crosses your path that when it does, and I'm talking the kind of mess that'll bother you for hours after playing it, the kind that keeps you up at night wondering, why was this even released? And I'm kind of getting off track here, but the kind of production, and really who's to say this even was a production? But of all the detective games and all the point and clicks in the world, and I had to play Jack Orlando. What a little horseshit that was! Meet Jack Orlando, a once well-respected and successful detective that put a stop to many a smuggling operation until the prohibition ended in 1933 and he became an alcoholic. Hmm, irony. As such, he's now broke, old, and isn't in too good favor with the citizens of Fake Town, USA. Late one night, Jack stumbles out of a bar and hears gunfire coming from a nearby alley. He hurriedly runs over to the man lying on the ground, only to be whacked across the head by an unknown assailant. And the last thing he sees before losing consciousness is the mysterious figure using a fire escape to get away. The next morning, police find Jack lying next to the victim and accuse him of murder. Major Pete Reynolds. United States Army. Hmm, this is a heavy one. Inspector Tom tells Jack he's got 48 hours to prove his innocence or he'll be locked up for good. He's let out onto the streets to begin his investigation, but he's advised to go home and take a shower first since he smells like dead people. So after he sink washes his balls, because there is no way this could be the sound of anything else happening, we finally get full control of him and can now go wherever we want. He controls pretty much like you'd expect. Click on the screen and if he can move there, he will. Hitting the middle mouse button pulls up your inventory and options screen and right clicking lets you select other types of actions. Jack can pick up objects, punch things or people, use his gun, or investigate the scene using his magnifying glass. Just a bucket. You think you're hot shit cause you got a brush witches. But even with all the friends in the world, you're still just a bucket. Clearly, the first step in solving this murder is following the killer's footsteps, so I should probably find a way to get up onto that roof. The problem is, the ladder is too high for Jack to reach himself, which means our first goal is to find something that can pull it down. Judging from these first few minutes, I can already tell a couple things about this game. One, prison cells from the 1930s look like sex dungeons, and two, saving the game often is necessary. Piper combo. Now this is the usual fare for point and clicks. Deduction is always the most important facet of the game. Talk to everyone you see, pick up anything that might be useful or might have been mentioned by a character, and through that figure out what you have to do. Take Biff here for example. He doesn't want anyone going near his car, but I'm pretty sure that handle over there is just what I need to get onto the roof. Talking to Biff doesn't get me anywhere, and pushing the issue ends with him decking Jack across the face. So instead of dealing with him directly, I'll see if anyone else has any good ideas. Biff has an iron skull, but hollow like a coconut. You'd need an iron fist for his iron skull. Hey, that gives me an idea. Coincidentally, there's a horseshoe right under this horse, which might not exactly be iron, but close enough. Another really important part of point and clicks is being able to combine items together like MacGyver to solve your problems. For example, loading a boxing glove with a horseshoe. Up on the roof, I find a pack of matches with the name of a nightclub on it, and on my way back down, I pick up the cigar the killer dropped the night before. On my way out of the alley, though, Biff wakes up and knocks Jack out. He comes to in the evening, but now I have two leads to work with and have the keys to my car. Although pretty straightforward in this example, this is how gameplay in a point-and-click game works. You're explicitly presented with a problem, and through clever thinking using tiny clues you've gotten by exploring and talking to people, you solve it. Keep this in mind because I'm going to bring it up later and it's important that you understand it now. 
This far in, I don't see too much wrong with this game, aside from the terrible voice acting and the strange looking animations. This whole game was hand drawn, and I know that's actually a really hard thing to do, but it doesn't look good here. Everyone in this game looks uncomfortable, like they're mushed into the scenery or stuck in an awkward position. Some of them look flat out terrible. Look at this lady's face. Just look at it! The only one that looks consistently okay is Orlando himself, and I suppose that's a good thing since he's our main character, but in a game where the focus is on talking to other people and checking my surroundings, he's the last person I'm going to be looking at. You could have just made him a cardboard cutout and I probably wouldn't have noticed. The next act of the game takes place downtown, where there's a lot of stuff and people to talk to. The first thing I do is go to the store that sells the same cigars as the one I found, Turns out the store clerk is a good friend of Jack, so he gives me some money and lets me know that a fellow with a gold cane purchased these cigars a few days ago, which means someone at the nightclub might recognize him if I ask around. There's a ton of people and places to look through before I actually get there though, so it wouldn't hurt to cover all my bases out here first. Stop the sniffing around, Orlando. Are you gonna be in a cement boots? Well this guy's just straight up being a jerk. Well, you know what I do to jerks around here? What do you want to know? Not an awful lot. Tell me, where can I find a casino? I heard that the casino is behind the restaurant. That the place across the street from Night Dogranis. There we go. Wait, what? Hold on a second. I thought I was looking for a nightclub. I mean, I didn't think anything would come out of slapping the guy aside from some funny digression. But why did Jack ask about a casino out of nowhere? Okay, I guess I'm looking for a casino too then? As it turns out, there aren't any checks in place to prevent you from having conversations about plot events that actually haven't happened yet. The casino is something that Jack doesn't actually know about until after we find the killer, and that leads into the second act of the game. There's also a lot of dialogue options talking about other things, like people that aren't actually where the dialogue says they should be. This already conflicts with the concept of collecting information, as a player could end up spoiling later events in the game for themselves, or even be led to believe that the information they've been given is relevant to their current objective. Again, keep in mind that the first thing anyone does in a point and click is collect information, so in participating in one of the basic fundamentals of the game you're playing, you've already spoiled parts of this game for yourself or have been given misleading information. You, uh, you starting to see the problem here? Nah, at any rate, if we actually want to know why we're looking for a casino later on, we still have to get into the nightclub. I had to give my money to the bouncer outside to get in, but at least now I can actually get some useful information. Three dollars, baby. Wow, city girls are cheap. I mean, honest. <clears throat> this woman says she knows what I'm looking for and is willing to split her jeans, I mean, spill the beans about who he is as long as I pay her. Problem is, I already gave the money to someone else. Hmm, ain't that a life lesson. I'll just reload a save. If I need to hold on to the money to give it to the girl inside, then clearly that means there's another way into the nightclub. Areas that I can get into are indicated by bending arrows that point in the direction I'd be going, so as long as I keep looking around, I'll find it. Somewhere. Anywhere. Here? No. Can I go into this bar? Nope. Does anyone around here have any ideas? Hey, watch the dog. What dog? Sorry, just a dumb joke. I like dumb jokes. Clearly not. Maybe there's something or someone in this old building that can help me out. Did that rat just make seagulls? Yep. Okay, I've been walking around this place for two hours and I can't find another way in. I've even tried bribing the bouncer outside with other stuff, but he doesn't budge and picking a fight with him doesn't do anything. I ran out of ideas and ended up talking to everybody in the city again, but no one has anything to say about the nightclub or really anything in general. Dialogue in this game means nothing. All the choices you have in conversation look the same even though they might branch off into different conversations, but most of the conversations end abruptly for no reason. Sometimes you can't even understand the conversation at all. The cops don't like you very much either and there ain't nobody gonna be whispering in your ear. You gotta stay on the ball. Any conversation that does make sense has nothing to do with the actual game, it just seems to be filler. On top of that, Jack doesn't seem too interested in actually asking about the investigation, and most of the time digresses into something completely irrelevant to what's going on. Sometimes he just lies for the hell of it. Excuse me, has my luggage arrived? I'm with Topware Industries Worldwide International, and I'd like... I'm an architect working for the city, and I'm meeting someone here. In a Chinese laundry? Jack Orlando. He might not be a murderer, but he's definitely a sociopath. Alright, I can either spend another three hours wandering around, double-checking with characters and places, or I can just look up a walkthrough. Now, I'm gonna warn you. What I'm about to do makes no sense. Okay. You've been warned. Grab this newspaper in the murder alley. Go to the hotel. 
Give the newspaper to the bellboy inside and he'll tell you about the laundromat that just opened up. You know, the same one that you've been walking in circles around for the past two hours? Yeah, that one. Jack acts surprised that this laundromat exists, but that's not important. What's important is that doing this spawns an NPC outside the laundromat. Why? I don't know. Why did the bellboy want the newspaper? I don't know. Now, mind you, I talked to everybody. I even examined the newspaper and all the surroundings to make sure I didn't miss anything, but nothing, absolutely nothing, even mentioned the bellboy. And why the hell does giving him the newspaper spawn the NPC outside the laundromat anyway? Does he summon him or something? Bellboys can't do that. No one can do that. Can they? You know what, if I stay on this, we'll be here all day. Let's just talk to the guy and move on. What can I do for you? Thank you, friend. Me fine. No, no, my brother has laundry. I only help him. I solid it up in all can do. I understand that the game takes place in the 1930s and you're trying to keep that setting authentic, but you made this game in the 90s. Don't you think this might have called for a little bit of, uh, I don't know, subtlety? You know what? No, it's not just trying to be authentic. There is so much stereotyping in this game that it comes off as more than just a desire to set a tone or establish a time period. Especially when your only Chinese character talks like this. If you want the information so badly, don't think what you give me for that. And his subtitles look like this. We're explicitly told that Biff is a brutish, aggressive type and that the only way to deal with him is violence. And the Italians? And I didn't even get the fresh bed sheets. Damn my town. Forget about it. Not to mention all the other weird inflections from other NPCs that I can't place anywhere on a map. I now go to head. Seriously, where is that guy supposed to be from? There's a lot of different ways to present the social commentary of the time period you're basing your game on without potentially insulting the people playing it. This isn't one of them. Look, I can tell you were going for some kind of accuracy and I don't usually make a big deal about this stuff, but the obvious attempts at humor using these stereotypes completely eclipses any accuracies you were trying to portray. <sighs> At least I have a new person to get information out of, right? The Chinese man says he'll trade information. Uh, oh no, wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Information for information. He wants a book. Well, earlier I did talk to a woman selling flowers that liked reading books, so obviously that's where I need to go. But yet again, talking to her yields nothing, and throwing all the items in my inventory at her didn't get me much farther. After about another two hours of searching and coming up with nothing, I consulted the walkthrough again. So the old woman in question indeed has a book she can give us, but in order to get it from her, we have to give her a flower vase. Where is this flower vase, you might ask? Inside this bar. You know, the one we're not allowed to go into? It's not like there's a reason for it either. The game is just indicating that it isn't an accessible area. So how do we get in? We have to give this pack of cigarettes to this bellboy outside the hotel. I would say it's a cheap way to prevent us from sequence breaking, but there was literally no way I could have known to give that guy a pack of cigarettes. And even if I did, why? The only reason I have to go into that bar is to get the vase. I still had to have spawned the Chinese guy in the first place to be able to give him the book the lady gives me for the vase, so what's the harm in going inside the bar without giving the bellboy a pack of cigarettes? It's not like he gives me special permission to go in there, he just tells me that's the bar he goes to after work. Surely if I'm able to see it and there isn't any narrative reason for me not being able to get in, the game should let me without having to, again, do something unrelated and unbeknownst to me. Whatever. Just tell me how to get into the nightclub. You give money, he wrapped you in. But you know how to give him money. I know other way. Nope. We're done here. For the sake of time, I'm not moving on to the rest of this game. Why? Because it should already be as clear to you as it is to me that it's broken. If I haven't gotten that point across, then I'm sorry. I have failed you. Not only is it unfair to your player, but it's very telling when you're deliberately hiding the one place I need to advance in your game behind an objective that is never introduced. In Jack Orlando, none of the things you actually have to do have anything to do with the information you're given. Instead of being able to talk to someone or watch their actions to deduce what they need, which is what should have been the main focus of gameplay, you're reduced to throwing everything you can pick up in the game at every single character until something sticks. That's not fun. That's work. And trust me, there are a lot of items you can pick up. By actively participating in the game they're playing, the player can end up spoiling later events because no one took the time to disable those conversation options or block those areas off. 
but of course, spoiling the game for your player is way less important than arbitrarily blocking off access to an area that didn't need to be blocked off in the first place. Then of course, you have the magically appearing NPCs that show up because of completely unrelated circumstances, like giving a completely unrelated item to a completely unrelated character. And you know what? I played through the rest of this game. I beat this game. But these are the problems that continuously come up all the way to the end. Jack Orlando isn't just a bad game. It's offensive in more ways than one and broken in so many places that as you play it, you are seriously questioning how it managed to get released. Aside from laughable voice acting, which I'll give a pass to considering voice acting at the time wasn't great, the game takes the social issues of the 1930s and instead of portraying it in a respectful manner, or at least in an authentic way, uses it for comedic purposes. Animations and characters look as though they're melting into the ground and lack any kinds of emotions when they speak or do anything. This completely takes the player out of the setting and only creates an even more jarring sense of discomfort. In a faulty attempt to make the game challenging, it throws out intuitive thought and replaces it with mindless checklisting, and then places arbitrary obstacles in front of the player without informing the player that the obstacle is even in place. This means that figuratively, the game plays like running into invisible walls, and the only way to get around them is to guess where the invisible walls end. This wouldn't be so bad if it was an 80s game or something made in the early 90s, but the amount of quality titles that were released and then re-released in remastered editions before this game even started production means that there was no excuse for it to come out as it did as the design it went with is extremely counterintuitive and a polar opposite to what makes point and click games enjoyable. And this is the director's cut. This is the improved version of this game. And you know what? You should play it. I encourage you to play this game without any sort of walkthrough. Seriously. Not because it's a game worth playing on its own merits, because it isn't, but because this is almost the antithesis of what point and click games are supposed to be like. Yeah, if you play Jack Orlando, chances are you're gonna understand what a bad point and click looks like the moment you play it. Man, I've been playing some really crap games recently. But unfortunately guys, that's all the time we've got. First things first, I want to apologize for how long this video ran. I actually had to cut out a ton of stuff to keep it under 20 minutes, so thank you very much if you made it all the way through. Let me know what you thought about it and what you think about Jack Orlando as well, and just point and clicks in general, really. And of course, if you're interested, here's a couple more videos you can watch. The one on the left is about Persona 4 Arena, and the one on the right is about a little-known RPG called Off. Like, subscribe, show this stuff to your friends, put it on Facebook, whatever. Or don't, it's all up to you. My name's GC. Remember Remember that you are amazing. Keep on playing positive and I'll catch you guys next time. I like dumb jokes.